Hey there folks, Toby here from MacProVideo.com and I'm here to show you a couple of cool tips and tricks for using Studio Drummer. So I'm here in the Grooves tab and I found this MIDI file I like, it's called 16th Hat Both. And if I just double click on this, you can see that it loads into the Groove player in the top right hand corner. And to audition this I just hit play. So if I decide I want to use this in a track, I can just grab the crosshairs here and just drag and drop this into my door. Now instead of just copying or looping this MIDI file as is, I want to add a bit of variation to it. Now I can do this using some of the tools built into the MIDI file player inside Studio Drummer. And we can see these at the bottom of the grooves window. So if we start here on the far left with tightness, if I move this anti-clockwise, this is going to slacken up the timing of the MIDI file. Now if I move this clockwise past 12 o'clock, it's going to push all the notes in the MIDI file towards the grid setting. So you can think of this as varying degrees of quantize. So next up we have a swing setting, and this is also determined by the grid value. Now on a 16th note groove with a 16th note grid, if I push this up and play this, you can hear I get that classic 16th note swing feel. Now this effectively doubles the size of a library because you can make swung variations of the straight beats and you can also straighten up any swung grooves you have as well. So just this parameter alone really expands the library out. So because these parameters actually manipulate the MIDI file, I can use them in a much more subtle way to add some variation to each MIDI file that I drag out. So if I just add a little bit of swing, take the tightness down a little bit, I should get a nice subtle variation on my original groove. So I'm also going to take the overall relative velocity of the MIDI file up using the velocity control and this will give me a slightly harder performance. So now I'm just going to drag this out into my door, and then I'm going to come back into Studio Drummer, make some subtle changes again to these parameters, and then drag out another version. And basically I'm going to repeat this process till I have an 8-bar sequence. So you can see if I open these parts and scroll through them, I'm getting these subtle shifts in timing. And this is exactly what you see in a real drum performance. So what about dynamic variation? Well, I can do this by using another feature in Studio Drummer, and this is in the Options page, and this is where we'll find the Randomize feature. Now, these work in different ways, and for this job, the one I'm interested in is Velocity. Now, this adds a random velocity offset to the MIDI coming into Studio Drummer before it hits the sample. So if I just turn this up a little bit, turn on Randomize, and when I play back the MIDI in my door, I should hear these random velocity offsets triggering the velocity layers either side of my original MIDI. Now the effects of these timing variations and these dynamic variations are very subtle, but they should be, and they go a long way to making your drums sound more organic. Now you can vary these dynamic changes further by mapping this parameter to a MIDI hardware controller, and then you can automate this over time in your door. Now so far we've managed to create a load of variation in just one MIDI file, and we've done all of this just using the features of Studio Drummer, and we haven't even got into the door yet to do any extra MIDI editing. And when you think that Studio Drummer ships with 3,500 MIDI files, you can see the scope. Now, if 3,500 MIDI files isn't enough for you, you can try this out. So let's say I like the hats from this 16th hat both MIDI file, and the both means it's got open and closed hi-hats. I can just load it and then drag it into my door. Then let's say I like the kick and snare from this 8th hat both ghost MIDI file inside groove 1 and the ghost means it's got ghost notes on the snare drum. Okay, so I'm liking that so I'm just going to drag that over to Logic as well. So now I can simply go into the hi-hat part that I like and delete the kick and snare and then go into the kick and snare part and delete the hi-hats. And then I can just glue these bad boys together and what I get is a totally new groove. Now the sheer amount of creative potential for this is pretty much off the scale. In fact, if you were to try all of these variations and you did one a minute, you'll be pleased to know it'll only take you 23 years. So you can't say that native instruments haven't given you enough choice on this one. Now before I go, I just want to show you a really cool feature in Studio Drummer. And this has to do with the new bus architecture in Contact 5. Now as well as getting a fully fledged mixer built into Studio Drummer, 
you also get a lot of flexibility when it comes to getting these mixer channels out of contact. Now you can see I have my contact mixer configured for eight stereo outputs. Now at the moment, all my mixer channels are being routed to the master output via the channel output section. And you'll find the master output up here in buses. And we can see the master output here. And this allows me to flip the stereo image and I can decrease the stereo width of the whole kit. And I can also process the entire kit using the built-in insert effects. Now, because every mixer channel is routed to an internal bus inside the actual instrument, this is all thanks to the new bus architecture, it means I can now route any channel in the mixer to any output in contact. And here you can see my eight stereo outputs. So I could send my overhead mono over to channels three and four in the contact mixer. And here you can see this signal coming up. Now this gives me an extra level of creativity when it comes to mixing my drums because I can use the built-in insert effects in the contact mixer. So here you can see I've added a flanger to my overhead mono. And because this is being routed into a separate channel in contact, it also means I can route this into a separate channel in my door. And this expands the creative potential further as it means I can use third-party plugins to mix within my door, say like this patch and guitar rig. So if I wanted to mix entirely in Logic, I could initialize the mixer in Studio Drummer, set up a proper configuration for my contact mixer, meaning I could pipe all of these separate mic channels straight into the mixer in Logic. And because these channels are now inside Logic, it now means that I can stem these tracks out as audio files. And this can be really useful if I'm taking my track to be mixed somewhere else. And you can do this in any door whose audio track can accept internal buses or auxiliary channels as inputs. And here we can see all those studio drummer channels as separate audio files. Now the new MIDI file support and bus architecture are real game changers for contact. And these are just a few of the features you'll find in Studio Drummer. I hope you've enjoyed this. My name's Toby. I'll see you later.